What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we are talking about cupping, and about how it can help you learn and expand your coffee tasting abilities. For quite a while, cupping was reserved basically for more of the behind the scenes work, like sourcing, roasting, and quality assurance. But over the past few years, public cuppings and tastings have gained some mainstream popularity. From local cafes hosting them on a weekly basis, at least pre-COVID, to large-scale virtual cuppings hosted here on YouTube, they've seemed to really hit their stride. As much as I enjoy cupping in its most basic form, it still feels more or less like a utility to me. More often than not, at the cupping table, I'm usually dialing in roast profiles, doing quality assurance, or picking out new coffees for Little Giant, so it's more of a serious business undertaking than it once was. But when I want to have a little fun, add a little challenge, or add some healthy competition to the cupping table, I like to break out triangulation exercises. If you're like me, you likely have more than one coffee on hand. At minimum for this, you'll need two coffees, but three or four would be a bit better and add a little more challenge to the mix. But today, for the sake of simplicity, and to not use more coffee than absolutely necessary, I'm going to use two different coffees. A single origin Guatemala and a single origin Costa Rican. Both are wash process and have a similar roast level and the same roast date. Flavor-wise, these coffees are pretty different and it shouldn't be very hard to distinguish between one and the other. But at home or wherever you're doing this exercise, try using coffees that are relatively similar in flavor to make it a little bit harder for yourself to pick out. But in this case, I'm just trying to show you an example using what I have on hand by setting it up and I'm not really trying to flex on you with my tasting prowess. But I digress, let's get this table prepped up. To keep things simple, I like to set up my triangulations and my standard cuppings using the SCA or Specialty Coffee Association cupping protocols. First up, grab a few bowls or glasses and also make sure you're grabbing them in sets of three. Before you start prepping any coffee, you'll also want to attach a sticker or a marking to the bottom of the cupping bowls you're going to set aside to contain the odd coffee out so it can be accurately identified after you cupped it. The SCA calls for 8.25 grams of coffee per cup and grounds slightly coarser than your typical paper filter brew. But remember, they're talking about coffee brewer and not pour over filter. So for me, on the niche zero, I adjust all the way past the numbers and align with the center screw by the lid. Once ground, your coffee should look more or less like this. As I set up this exercise, I'm going to fill two bowls of each set with Guatemalan, and then one of each group with four grams of Guatemala and 4.25 grams of Costa Rican. Any cup containing the outlier coffee will be marked with an orange sticker on the underside so it can be identified after tasting and evaluation. It may be a little bit more difficult to go about the triangulation solo, thanks COVID, but it takes a little time to prep up. So if you just prep all your bowls and then mix them around and go do other things like boiling your water and getting other things ready, Hopefully you maybe forget and kind of keep a little bit of mystery alive in the process. Once all of your samples are ground, each cup will receive 150 milliliters or grams of approximately 200 degree Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius water. As you fill the cups, begin a timer. I usually measure the first cup in terms of weight and then do the best to align all the cups to that same level. Finally, once your timer hits 4 minutes, you're ready to begin your tasting and evaluation process. Just like a standard cupping, your evaluation process should begin by breaking the crust and smelling the aroma that each bowl presents, taking note of which cups may already be the outlier. From there, you'll need to scrape off and remove the crust or any grounds that remain on the surface of the bowl, paying close attention to rinsing your spoons between each sample to ensure no cross-contamination occurs. Once your timer reaches 10 minutes and the cups have sufficiently cooled, you can begin tasting. In this process, you'll want to aerate each slurp of coffee off your spoon to allow the coffee to cover as much surface area on your palate as possible. Getting that proper slurp off your spoon is definitely a skill and we all feel awkward doing it in the beginning, but trust me, it gets easier with time. After you've tasted each cup in a set and you feel as though you've found the odd bowl, pull it aside and move on to the next set of coffees. This process should be repeated until you've completed all the triangulation sets on the table. And last but not least, you can check underneath each of your guesses to see if you made the right choice. 
Also, you may want to invest in a decent sized strainer for your sink because those coffee grounds have to go somewhere as you discard the samples. Trust me, your plumbing will thank you. Triangulations and cupping in general are great ways for you to train your palate into picking up differences both big and small. You can always increase or decrease the difficulty as well, which is a great way to grow as a coffee lover or a professional. Smelling and tasting more and more coffees will give you a broader understanding of not only the flavors that can be found in coffee, but also gaining insight into some of the more subtle and complex factors like origin, varietal, and processing, just to name a few. But if you're just starting out, it may be more helpful to focus on broader descriptors like sweetness, acidity, body, and aftertaste before trying to hone in on those more subtle flavors. In the grand scheme, cupping is just one of the many puzzle pieces that help us gain a better understanding of this very complex beverage we know as coffee. As unusual, complicated, and at some points awkward as it may seem the first few times you do it, like anything else, it gets easier and becomes more like second nature. Doing triangulations, or at the very least cupping coffees on a regular basis, is a great way to build up and maintain your tasting skills. Plus, it's a useful way to use some of that extra coffee you've got lying around, so it's a win-win. Of course, learning how to cup and taste coffees like a professional isn't a prerequisite to enjoying it. Drink coffee however you'd like, whether it's the calming morning ritual of brewing up a pour over, or the challenge of dialing in a delicious shot of espresso, just enjoy it. But with all that said, I think it's time to wrap this one up. Drop any thoughts, comments, or questions about cuppings, triangulations, or anything coffee related down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. And of course, a big thank you to my December Patreons, Ads, James B, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Obo, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew, Horison, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Jason C, Jerry, R, D, Tim, Matt, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler F, UK Espresso, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Chris M, Daniel P, Mike B, James S, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, and Sebastian. And of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, a big thank you to you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Prometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.